We are 11 days into the new decade. 11 days into the 20s. And we might just have the single worst take of the decade right here. Not here. Not here. This is, this is the springboard for the worst take of the decade. Ladies and gentlemen, I am impressed by how just how the establishment of the backmarkers in NASCAR can have some of the best opinions out of the out of the entire series and they can also have some of the worst like this is a spectrum this is an absolute spectrum. We are about to witness some things on a spectrum, that's for sure. But when I'm saying, like, we have a spectrum of diverse opinions in the sport of NASCAR. Like, it's ridiculous how, how differing everyone's opinion is. Because, you know, everyone and their mother are going to say, whenever you talk to them about, about NASCAR, someone who's uninitiated, they're going to be like, Oh, they're just a bunch of rednecks. All they do is just be like, Oh, we just like to smoke our cigarettes. We like to fuck our cousins, and we like to vote for Trump. That's what NASCAR fans do, and everyone in the sport. No, it's such a diverse field of opinions. It's probably more diverse than, than most, because it's such a tight-knit community that people can actually give these takes without the, the fear that they're going to be dogpiled. Now, on the other hand, <laughs> that's exactly what's happened today. Now, in front of you right now is... Some cultural appropriation. This is digital blackface. We have Doug Kobe using a gif of color. Um, if you're unaware, that's racist. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is the text of this tweet. Today on social media, I'm not even trying to pronounce that, and I saw people who drive race cars on a computer, Rick Allen would say. Having media days, media days, announcing sponsorships with Junior Motorsports and hanging out with Denny Hamlin on Lake Norman makes real race car drivers want to puke. You poor, innocent man, Doug Kobe. The poor man who could not get out of wheel and modifies, who is super mad that online sim racers get to hang out with Denny Hamlin instead of him. Doug Kobe is the original incel. Doug, just, it's just like, you should have listened to him, guys. You should have listened to Doug. You brought this upon yourselves when he goes to the, um, when he comes to Daytona and he goes on a mass shooting spree, huh? Yeah, when he posts on 4chan, some of you are cool. Don't go to the Daytona 500 this week. Yeah, man. You brought it upon yourselves. Doug Kobe, the incel, man. Yeah, so, um, basically, this is not the worst take of the decade. It's up there. It's up there. This is a bad, um, this is a bad take. This is really bad. Even Dale Jr. concurs. What an awful take. <laughs> like, I don't even need to make this video. I could have just retweeted this and called it a night, but no. Here we are. Um... Never once did I say that iRacing isn't competitive, difficult, fun, or useful to learn tracks, or that I hate it or wouldn't do it if I had time. Well, what's this all about then? What's this all about then? Why are you so salty about sim racers if you don't hate them? Hate my guts all you want for making the comment, but support your local short tracks in 2020. They're the foundation of the sport. Okay, dog, you can support your local short tracks and still be a sim racer. Like, these two can coexist. They can. They really can, dog. You do not need to be such an angsty old man on today's... Oh my goodness gracious. So Brian Kozlowski is obviously the reason why we're here today. Everyone is dogpiling on um, Doug Kobe, which is uh, entirely justified. But I think the best thread of all is the one where I was right here, baby. So, well, that sort of thing, racing is the only thing I can afford to do. But if you're more than welcome to give me under or approximately um, 50k and put me in a real race car to prove your point or whatever, see, that's straight up facts. 
there's literally no way that some people can get into racing. Like, I've wanted to get into racing since I was five. And since everyone in my personal life is poor, is dirt fucking poor, like, we can't. I can't even afford a roller. I, I, don't even, I can't even afford a roller. That's, that's where we're at in life. Um, See, you are so conditioned to think today's racers are given money, or I have money, so that's why I race. Um, that's kind of why no one fucking races, is because everyone keeps getting bought, you know, priced out by the rich kids. So yeah, if you don't have money, you can race, but you're gonna lose every dollar you put into it. Know who you're talking to before you get snarky and defensive. Oh, he's being defensive. Oh, he's being defensive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this... This is just the most nuclear take. This take. Oh my god, Brian Keselowski. You absolute mammoth of a man. I was gonna wait... Until Dave Moody... Inevitably made a comment on this, because I know it's going to be just vapid of any value whatsoever, but I just can't. I just, I just have to make this video before this tweet gets deleted. So, um, in response to the tweet I talked about before, you ha also have a support system around that is willing to help you in that journey and live in an area where racing is an actual thing that is not possible for some people like myself, so we turn to this. Straight up fucking facts. Straight up fucking facts. The nearest racetrack to me is 74 miles away. And they, they actually had a really good night when I was commentating for them, but most nights they only get around, you know, 60 cars. Which is pretty good, all things considered. 60 cars, but it's but it's like six different divisions. Like they're like the legends. They have I think I had I think I saw six of them at most. We had a we had a really bad night for um um for hobbies where I think 11 cars showed up. But yeah, like I know some people I've started networking within this group of uh, uh racers, so like Maybe someday I'll be able to actually race, but for now, literally, like me, like me, I, I physically cannot afford anything right now. Especially with fucking student loans. Fucking goddamn bullshit. But anyway, yeah. Uh, this guy, we have yelled at each other on Twitter before, but he's straight up facts right now. Huh, that's funny, just like with Brian Kozlowski. Now that you brought out the facts to them, they're silent. Wrong there, but he makes a good point. What facts, dumbass? I play Madden, but it doesn't make me a coach or football player. You idiots think you are on the same level as real racers, and it's a mental disorder. No different than kids shooting your schools because they play shooting games. You people need help. Glass houses, Brian. What? What? Brian Kozlowski has made some great statements on this website. What is this? What is this, Brian? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I am dumbfounded. Are you kidding me, Brian? What is this? <laughs> Sir. Sir. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> wow. This is the most amazing thing I've ever read. I can't believe a real human being. A real human being who completed third grade.
wrote something like this. I don't need to, but I guess let's try and analyze this. I play Madden, but it doesn't make me a coach or football player. Yes, Madden is a completely realistic representation of football. It's a real representation of the game of football. It is an accurate football simulator. Football simulator. All the bits and pieces are in place to make this game the next sim, the next esports legend. Look at this. Yep. This. Brian, you are aware that while iRacing is a game, over 10, I think over 15 years at this point has been put into making it into the most realistic hardline racing simulator. You are aware that cup drivers use it to practice. You are aware that racing sims in the garages of all the major Cup Series teams are heavily based off of this foundation. It's a game, so it's obviously not going to be a 100% realistic representation of what the racing experience is. But it's the closest thing that we're probably ever going to get. I'm not saying you have to respect it. But it's the future, Brian. It's the future, Brian. Brian. So no, Madden is not meant to be... And Madden is not the same as iRacing. Madden is a video game for casual players. It's a yearly release designed to make money and keep your 13-year-olds distracted, okay? Okay, it's not the same as iRacing, dude. iRacing is a simulator. Madden is an arcade game. Oh my god, dude. You idiots think you're on the same level as real racers and it's a mental disorder. Yes, some people who race in sims think that they're on the same level as real racers. And you know what? I bet you some of them are. I bet you some of them are. I bet you if Zach Novak got in shape, he'd probably be better than most Roush development drivers that we've seen in the past decade or two for that matter. But when you get good at something, like I would trust, I would trust any number of uh, peak antifreeze series drivers with my multi-million dollar race car than I would Mike fucking Seneca. Than I would most of the people that Brian works with. Most of the people that have churned their way through Rick Ware Racing and Carl Long's MBM team. I'd trust Zach Novak in the car way more than most of them. No different than kids shooting your schools because they play shooting games. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because the boomers are really mad. They posted a take that was really bad. And the vision that was planted in my brain still remains from the old out of touch boomer. I can't believe that you actually said this, Brian. I used to have respect for you, my man. I really did. I used to think that you were one of the Shining beacons of hope in the garage. I used to think that anything you said actually mattered. 
Brian, what the fuck? Absolutely incredible. This is the most amazing sentence that I have ever read in my life. There are so many layers to this. Like, I can't even begin to explain. I, I, I can't. I can't even... I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know. I can't even formulate words right now. It's like I've witnessed someone's... It's like a singularity has taken place within the skull of Brian Kozlowski and his brain is on the other side of the Milky Way at this point. Like, there's no getting it back. There is no getting it back. This is the worst take. <laughs> this is the worst take. I, I, I can't. I just can't right now. I'm going to log out of Twitter quick and see if... Uh, um, if Dave Moody said anything yet. Moody! Dave Moody on Twitter. Three hours ago. Elton John. Well... Nothing interesting out of Dave Moody on this occasion, so that's unfortunate, but, um... Damn it! Fucking open up the... Okay. So... <laughs> oh my god, dude. That's... That's in absolutely incredible. This is so bad. So, so bad. So bad. This is so bad. I mean, I don't know. Brad! Brad! Come collect your brother! Come get this man. I don't know. I don't even know. And this is just, this is just what a way. What a way to end the tweet. What a way to end the tweet. Oh man. I just, I just can't. Sir. Sir. Please. Please. Oh my god. Well... So that's, that's that. So there it is. Um, quite possibly the worst take of the decade. We are 11 days into it, guys. 2020 is shaping up to be a hell of a year. So, um, yeah. Brian, please check yourself. Please sit down, check yourself. Get a, get a, get a CAT scan done. See if, that there, see if there's still something up there, because I think you're missing a couple of things. I think you're missing, you're missing something up there. I can't believe what I've read on this day. This is, this is an absolutely incredible, incredible moment in channel history, I've got to say. But I think this video has gone on for far long enough. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. It's going to be hard to top this one. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!